And good morning. Welcome to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com as we talk to the head basketball coach of the Wabasee Warriors, Coach John Everingham. Coach, thanks for coming in and being with us today. Uh, feels good to be here. A little early for me, but uh, here we go, right? <laughs> you betcha. You betcha. Let's uh, recap the last couple of games that we played. We'll start with uh, the action from last night as we travel to Kendallville to take on East Noble. Boy, that's a team that has... Uh, Totally different uh, image, totally different way of playing, depending on which group of guys they put on the floor. They, they can really change from one style to another at the drop of a hat. Yeah, we ran into another team that uh, is like senior laden, you know, upperclassmen. Oh, yeah. You know, you see you got six foot nine, uh, 320 pounds, <laughs> yeah. you know, a division one a guard in lineman. football. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, but they go six three, six three. I think they got six six, yeah. uh, six nine. And Off the bench, those six, guys, six. those guys are uh, big boys. You know, physical. You know, and that conference over there, I, I coached in that conference, and they're really kind of known for um, you know physical, aggressive, you know, style play, much like the the NLC. So it kind of felt like it was a game that maybe would prepare us for the sectional. But they were big, man. They, they were physical and and hit some timely shots and. And um, I, I really thought that we hung in there. You know, we didn't play particularly well. I thought um, we didn't execute against some of their, you know, pr their trapping, you know, stuff. But um, it's it's like a lot of the games we had. You know, we're down, you know, single digits. You know, maybe eight points or seven points. And and I think Dukes and uh, Everingham had a had wide open looks. You know, to really kind of cut it into maybe a four or five point lead, but we just couldn't knock the shots down when we needed to. You know, one of the things that I thought was really interesting while Bill was calling the game, I was watching the uh, matchup between Robinson and their big guy. And whenever the big guy was in there, you would put yeah. Robinson in there. And those two, <laughs> boy, you talk about rugby basketball at its finest. Oh, gee whiz. There's a lot of weight being thrown around down yes. there. Colin, mm -hmm. I, for the first time this season, I looked out there when they were battling. Colin looks small. You know, that <laughs> kid is... is is, he's a chump. He's a giant, you know. Then, and just a little history, if if you don't know, um, that's Brad Miller's nephew, and so, um, you know, Brad Miller was uh, in the mid '90s, played at East Noble, and uh, went on to play at Purdue, and and then for the Chicago Bulls, you know, an NBA All Star, you know, type guy. But I I remember that's what Brad Miller looked like, maybe a few inches taller, but he just was a giant out there. Um, obviously, more skilled than his nephew, but. Um, man, that kid last night, it, it, he was a, he was a lot to handle. And then, you know, you start paying a little more attention to him than, than you think. And then all of a sudden, bam, they knock down, you know, some threes from the outside. So, um, you know, they've struggled in, in the past couple of years, but they, they haven't had Denton. Denton has been, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, a kid that they were really, really high on when he was a freshman and tore his ACL, uh, in one of his knees his sophomore year. And then his junior year last year tore his other knee you know his acl there so um you know they have a good basketball team a good solid basketball team uh, they like to get up and go i thought we played at a pace that just was a little too fast for us honestly. Mm, yep. i wondered about that yeah uh tempo control yeah. Uh, something that uh, your guys will i'm sure uh they, they've shown great skill at that uh throughout the year but last night maybe not as much yeah we you know we you know, with our lack of depth, and we are playing a few more guys. You know, mm -hmm. Darius Lewis is getting in there and giving us some good minutes. Uh, Robbie Finlinson, an, uh, another freshman, um, getting in there and, and gave us some good minutes. And, and uh, Jay Finlinson mm -hmm. played maybe a little bit more um, that he has in the past. So we're still, you know, trying to develop those guys and, and to get them in the game so they can provide some good, solid minutes for us. But, you know, our main guys are top five or six, you know, with Felger coming off the bench last night and Colin being our, yeah, probably our true sixth man, you know, right now. Um, it's just a lot to play at a, at a real fast pace. And, and they do a good job of speeding you up, you know, with, with the traps that they were doing and the, and the full court pressure. Um, we just need to do a better job of, of making better cuts and, and getting open and maybe staying a little more patient. And patience will get you some better shots, you know, too. And I thought we took a lot of contested shots. and We did. And, um, you know, that ultimately kind of got us there at the end. And that patience could also get you to the foul line more, which yeah. uh, really uh, your guys at the foul line has been one of your great strengths this year. Yeah, it's, it, you know, the again, you were, it's just a fact, you know, that, that the really, honestly, you know, we got, uh, you'll get a chance to, today to, to talk to the two freshmen and, and um, but, 
you put some freshman bodies out there against juniors and seniors and and um you know they just kind of bounce off you know um upperclassmen's bodies and, and it's hard to draw fouls right now but those are things that we'll take a look at in the off season and mm-hmm. and certainly do better. But I don't think in the next week or two that well, but your guys just be shoot foul shots so well. That's that that was my point. Yeah, at one point I think um, I, I was really trying to look it up, and we had to be one of the leading you know free throw shooting teams in the state. It, at any time you're above seventy percent uh, as a team, um, that's really good. Mm-hmm. And, and for a, for a long stretch there, I think we were up around 75 percent. So you know, you know, and Duke's had a great second half. You know, I got him for 17. He d- did not hit any threes in the first half. But then in that third and fourth quarter, especially the third quarter, he came alive. And then he became, I thought, uh-oh, man, if we can get Dukes to shoot the three and these Everingham kids, uh, you know, we got a really good chance of putting them away again. Yeah, and uh, Dukes hit a three. Uh, uh, Maddox hit a two back-to-back threes. Yeah. And then, again, then we started the stretch where we had some good looks. We set up another set for Maddox on the on the right wing where he had a wide open look and and um, uh, Miles had a good look and and Dukes again had a good look from the outside. But um, you know it, we're not into making excuses. You just wonder how tired our legs are and and all that stuff. Why we're not knocking down those shots in key moments. And so uh, again against Westview, we tried to get a scheduled rotation and get other guys in the games. And, you know, Maddox shot the ball, you know, better. Um, so maybe there's something to getting those guys rest early in the game. And we're starting to build some confidence in those guys coming in. Um, and Darius Lewis and, and Jay and, and Colin or Peyton, whoever comes off the bench there, you know that we're going eight deep and, and pretty comfortably going eight, eight deep. And the big thing that, of course, happened uh, with East Noble um, for what we see as far as the record books, 1,001 points now oh, yeah. uh, in the career for Keaton Dukes. That's that's tremendous. Yeah, it's really cool. It was a cool moment, you know, and I know we we dropped the game, um but there there are times, you know, probably throughout my coaching career or a season that that just things that happen that that just are probably a little bigger than um, you know, than than the one game that you're playing in and I think we got to experience that last night and and you know, Keaton's durability um, I, I don't know of a better word is stick to itiveness, you know, his ability to kind of stick with the, the basketball program through ups and downs. And there are plenty of, of ups and downs, you know, you, he just is the type of guy he's very mature. And I know yes. that, uh, you guys got a chance to talk to him after the game last night. And I hope people, you know, listen to some of the things that he says and how well-spoken he is. Um, in addition to being a good basketball player, he's got a 3.8 GPA. Oh my gosh! Um, uh, it's not uncommon to see Keaton, you know, uh, working with or walking with in the hallways. You know, a special ed student, um, or or maybe a, a student that maybe not as as popular as as the other students in the school. Um, so he's a well-rounded uh, young man, and and uh, probably at this point you call him a man. I'm sure that that he's grown from. That young boy that came in as a freshman to um, uh, to the person he is today, and I think more importantly than that, thousand points mm-hmm. um, is the person that he is. But um, you know, we knew that he needed 19 points to get to to a thousand, and we had some things ready for social media, and and it came up on us a little quicker than uh, than maybe I thought it was going to happen. Um, at one point during the season, I said, "Are you are you thinking about the thousand points?" He's like, "Yeah, I just." He's, I, this is honestly what he said. He said, coach, I, I just want to win. And so, you know, he's, he's got the idea that, you know, the team accomplishments are certainly way more important than individual accomplishments. But this one in particular in 50 years of the school or whatever, uh, to only have seven people accomplish this particular feat, it's one that we are going to celebrate, you know, um, uh, we're going to do everything we can to just kind of celebrate that for Keaton. Talk about the ball. He got their game ball at the end, and I thought that was a neat story. And then I told him, Bill asked during the interview with him last night, he said, what about uh, where are you going to school? And he said, well, and he told us this before, and his dad told us this. They're putting it off till next year. And I said, well, well putting it off to the end of this year. At the end of this year, I meant, yeah. I said, uh, don't make the same mistake Zolman did. I mean, if she had gone, both Notre Dame and Tennessee were recruiting her very heavily. I got to sit next to both coaches when they came in and interviewed Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and she wound up going to Tennessee, which is too far away to drive. So I said, drive, get, go someplace close so Bill and I can come and watch the games. And he just laughed. But yeah. uh, talk about the game ball. Yeah, I think, well, the uh, 
two things to talk about there, the recruiting and college, and, and then, you know, how gracious, um, you know, East Noble was last night. Right. You know, Kyle and Mindy um, Dukes both graduated from East Noble, and mm. I know talking to, you know, Kyle privately, he was saying it would be kind of nice if, if, he, if he did it at home, first and foremost. You know, we'd like him to do it at home, but... Um, if, if not at home, it'd be kind of cool if he did it at East Noble or Mindy and I, you know, both graduated. So, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that would be cool if, if that happened, but I just 19 points against that team was, was just, uh, that was just a lot of points in mm-hmm. one game. Uh, but once he got to 17, I, it was clear that he was, he was going to get it. So, um, in talking to Nick David, you know, their, uh, athletic director who I have a long standing relationship with, he was the head coach of the girls program at DeKalb. Um, so our families are pretty, pretty close, but I asked him, I said, is it appropriate to stop the game? We, I've never coached a kid. It's got to a thousand, you know? And so I said, is it appropriate to ask, you know, to stop the game and whatever? He's like, oh, absolutely. He's like, that's, that's an amazing feed. And, and certainly with Kyle and Mindy's background at East Noble, he was more than happy to, to stop the game. And, and, um, we called over, um, the East Noble coach, coach Janelle, um, and asked him about it. He said, yeah, just call a timeout, and then we'll agree not to have it count against yeah, you, yeah, you know. Yeah. So we stopped the game, and and um, it was kind of a cool moment, you know. Um, and then they gave him the game ball afterwards, you know. So I said, I asked Nick, I said, well, you want reimbursed for that ball? Those things are kind of expensive. <laughs> he said, absolutely not. He said, that's that's a great feat for, for Keaton, and we're happy for him. And so he's like, well, let me make sure. I hope you guys lose by at least one, you know, tonight. <laughs> but uh, so he was rooting for East Noble, certainly. But um, we're very thankful for uh, how gracious they were last night in, in creating that moment for Keaton. Let's briefly recap that Westview game. Also, a uh, big win for Wabasee and one we won at the foul line. We did. You know, late in the game, we did to teams what, teams have been doing to us we hit some timely shots and and we got some big stops you know on the defensive end and then you know keaton goes eight for eight down the stretch and and uh we made free throws you know to to close out the game there but it's never easy to win over there i mean mm-hmm. they got a cool environment over there and they always have good teams and and um i think i looked and we hadn't won over there wallace has not won at westview uh since 2010 mm. you know so um that's a long time to to not get a win at a, at a gymnasium, but um, that's certainly something we're going to hang our hats on. And, and we played against a good basketball team and came out victorious. And and uh, we celebrated on Tuesday. Yeah, you're right. Been Coach, a little while. Seventy six percent from the free throw line yeah. uh, against uh, Westview. So you know that was that that was the key factor right there, Bill. You yeah, it really was. That. And uh, our guys uh, taking the foul was very good. Yes. Yeah. And we, you know, the other thing too is we stayed poised. We you did know, because they they came back and and I think, um, you know, at one point they tied the game with probably a minute or a minute and a half left to go and and um, but unfortunately for them, unfortunately for us, they fouled right away. So yeah. they tied the game, and that gym's acoustics are you guys know way more about acoustics than I do, <laughs> but the, the the noise bounces off everywhere in it there does. and it it creates a really loud environment mm-hmm. and um, they had their academic hall of fame and they gave an award to, i think everybody in the school before the game but it, it, there were quite a few <laughs> yeah. So, yeah it was like over a hundred <laughs> yes so yeah. they had a lot of people at the game and so there are a lot of students and there were a lot of people and and it, it got loud when they tied the game and, sure. and we stayed poised in that situation i was proud of our team for that yeah well when we come back we're going to look ahead to uh, our next contest elkhart christian that's next here on coach's corner with Coach John Abraham on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com as we talk to the head basketball coach for the Wabasee Warriors, Coach John Abraham. Two big games coming up, Coach. Uh, First of all, we'll take on Elkhart Christian, a relatively... Uh, new addition to our schedule, but uh, one that gave us everything we could handle last year. Yeah, they sure did, and they got everybody back. And so, um, <laughs> you know, huge. That, you know, our schedule, man. It's like, uh, you, you know, I was told one time by a, a mentor of mine is sometimes it, it's not how good you are, it's how good your schedule is. Mm, and and yeah. you know, you get you get these waves. It goes in cycles. Some some years you're not quite as good as you were the year before, but 
your schedule is laced with mm -hmm. you know juniors and seniors and veteran players and everybody's got everybody back and and i think this year has just been one of those years where our schedule has been probably tougher than any of the the six years that i've been here for cert for certain um and so every program seems to be you know kind of peaking you know uh, but i will tell you you know for us next year whenever we get a chance to kind of talk about that um and maybe it will be next year but there there's gonna be a lot of programs losing a lot of really good players and so um especially early in our schedule um but elkhart christian's a, a team that's got everybody back um they got a lot of seniors you know juniors and seniors on their team and and um the the, the coach there um, again, um, is a guy that I've known for quite a while. He's a coach at Lakewood Park uh, mm -hmm. when I was in Lakewood Park's in Auburn when I was a coach at DeKalb. So Chad Hibbert, um, you know, is the, is the coach there. His son actually plays on, on the team too, a good shooter. Um, but, um, you know, one thing I do want to mention about Elkhart Christian is there um, – we want to make sure that we thank them for moving their yes. game because we were supposed yes. to play them the night that – that we were supposed to play uh we were we were supposed to play elkhart christian and we ended up playing northridge the nlc game and they were nice enough without hesitation to move the game back um against elkhart christian instead of canceling you know the game to uh monday night because they play on tuesday so they play monday tuesday friday of next week um so so we're very thankful that they they actually moved the game back that we're actually playing the game you know monday night and your game is away so that's going to make it tougher. I, I've never been to Elkhart Christian, but you were talking about their gym earlier. Yeah, I have been there. I played there uh, in a conference championship game, actually. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I remember that game very vividly. Uh, um, we, we had to throw a full court pass to win that game and fouled our worst free throw shooter, senior kid that doesn't <laughs> play a whole lot. Yeah, uh, James Rensberger, but uh, James knocked them both down. Oh, my God. And it's loud in there, too. And it only seats probably 200 people probably oh, wow. at the most it's got a stage on one side but um you know they get into the games over there and it's loud it's just mm. like a little cracker box you know of a gym over there so it feels like everything's closing in on you you know the walls around the like old school you know like walls yeah. around the court or, or right out right close to the court and then there's an upper deck you know where people sit so um it's a, it'll be an interesting environment going from east noble it seems yes. like you know a big old school open stadium gym mm -hmm. and even westview on tuesday yeah. seems like a big open you know type gym into the small you know what what seems like a middle school gym over at elkhart christian um it, it'll be interesting to kind of you know see how that plays but i'll tell you one good thing yeah after elkhart christian we're not playing another road game until the regional so <laughs> so we got some home games lined up after after that one well that's really good for you too especially for the kids and then especially to get ready for uh, sectionals. Yeah. That's got to be huge, you know. And, and you're going to have a tough time Monday night against this team. They're, I was looking them up, and, you know, they're, they've got a winning season. Uh, they've lost only to teams that are, like, you know, top in the state. So yeah. you're going to have it. That's going to be a great game. And they're very tall. Yeah. Yes. And they, they're big. Um, like I said, they, they got some upperclassmen, and, and uh, they're well coached. So um, it's just like every other game on our schedule. Yes. You know, we played Bethany Christian and – there's times when Bethany's been down, mm -hmm. you know, just a little bit, and, and you go in and you win by 20 or 30 and you get the heck out of there and you move on to the next game. But we've, we've only had one of those games maybe this year, maybe Garrett, you know. But um, but every other game on our schedule has been a grind. Yes. You know, it's been a grind. It's been tough, you know. And so it's not just us, Wallace C, struggling with those teams. Everybody's struggling with those teams. And, and so there's been a lot of really good games that we played on our schedule we're pro we're probably five to six or seven possessions, you know, away from being right around yes. five hundred or you know. or better or better, yeah. You know, and the the talent this year is so even. You know, when Bill and I talk about that, like last night, their big score, their six nine guy, you know, Robinson took care of him. Yeah. You know, he did not go and score three million points. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but uh, you know, they were still able to win. But you know, Bethany Christian is going to be the same thing. It's going to be a really tough game. The Wallace has to play their finest in order yeah. to win. And and Tippy Valley had a, a little bit of a down year um, last year, mm -hmm. um, but we beat them twice at you know, their place at the at the end of the season. <laughs> Um, so, but Tippy Valley coming into our house on a Friday night, they've turned things around and, and, um, you know, they're at 12, 13 wins as well. So they're, they're as good as they've been in probably five years since they won the sectional. And so, um, and then it doesn't matter who we draw on the sectional, 
you know the sectional draw is tomorrow we lost to lakeland we lost to west noble um you know we lost to northwood and uh we Fairfield. played we played tippy valley so so anyway it's going to be no matter who we draw it's yep. going to be tough so we just better get used to it kind of put on our big boy pants and and realize that every game is going to be tough well the nice thing about the sectional at home yeah i mean that's got to be a huge advantage especially you'll get a you know a pretty large wallace crowd yep. our gym is home uh, talk a little bit about that i just well, there's no other place we'd rather play, obviously, than, yeah. than home. And, and so we're comfortable. We practice here, and, and we played some of our better games, you know, here. We're, we don't get – you know, one thing about our team, we just don't get flustered, and, and we, we keep our poise pretty well, you know. So we're, we're ready. I mean, we're ready for a big, big crowd, and, and um, it puts a little pressure on the, the team that's a favorite, you know, coming in. Yes. Certainly Northwood being ranked number one in the state is, is uh, got all the pressure on the world. They got the yep. whole – there, I mean, there's everyone from Napanee talking about the Leo Northwood regional matchup. And that's all. It, can we get past Leo this year? Can we get past Leo? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking in my head, well, you better get past the sectional yeah, teams first. Yeah, right. You got to win the sectional first. You know, West Noble um, outscored Northwood in the second half, um, I think, by 15 points mm -hmm. in their game. And so uh, they got off to a rotten start and got down by 25. But um, West Noble's capable. Um, and then you look at Tippy Valley. Tippy Valley lost by nine or ten points to Northwood last week, and so, and then we were right there with Northwood as well. And so we're all all three of those teams. I'm not sure Lakeland is probably good enough to to really knock off Northwood right now, but there's three teams in the sectional that really believe that they can beat Northwood. And so, the sectional draw tomorrow. We'll have the guys over to our house and eat some pizza and watch that kind of unfold. Um, what time is that? That's at five o'clock tomorrow on IHSA TV, I believe, and so you can catch that online. But that's going to be really interesting, isn't it? To see who we draw. Mm -hmm. Oh my! And how? And then yeah. you know, and what game you play them if you get a bye the yeah. first round. So all that's going to be just huge. And your kid, that is really a neat thing to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, have them over for pizza and look at the draw and. Then you guys get to discuss it, and oh man, that's that's kind of a fun thing to do. It is, and I I say it every year, and it's really true this year. It doesn't matter. It there's a probably one scenario that's uh, that's really beneficial for us. It's really know? beneficial for anybody. It's the draw with late. It's the buy with Lakeland. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you said it correctly. So <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to jinx it. Well, but, it doesn't no. matter. I mean, Bill knows he's basketball. Every, every school in the in the sectional is looking for the same draw. It's really weird when you look at the records, and I'm telling you, every coach is is looking at it, and um, and they know us, right? Oh, they yeah. know who we are, and I know what our record is, and they know what our record is, but they're not wanting to draw us. They don't want to draw Northwood first. But we're right in line with people going, ah, man, it's going to be a tough one with, with Walwa C. It so is. We're going to be a really tough out. I can tell you that. There's no question about that. But, you know, you put us in the bye on, on just two two teams. are going to There's going to be four teams playing on Friday night. Right. Two of them oh, – sorry, three of them will be a first game. So if you, if you get Northwood on the other side of the bracket, maybe that's the best draw. But I was talking to Rob Yoder, the Westview coach, and he's won state championships and all that stuff. He said – Take the best team on the first night. Really? Take Talk the best team on the first night because the most thing is, they overlook you. They're most likely to uh, potentially overlook you. And the other thing too, the nerves of the sectional, especially when you're the favorite, it costs you a quarter. And I've said this my whole wow. career. It costs you a quarter because just getting through the all the nerves and the tournament play and the expectations and everything what you see in a lot of cases is that you see the favorites in the sectional not play play well in the first quarter of the game so um i've seen it happen over and over and over again so really the best time to knock off you know the best team is in the first night on a, on a tuesday so i mean it's just a theory maybe it won't happen but once once those nerves kind of go away in the first game whoever you got the next game, if you can get through it, it you become a lot more relaxed. Yeah. So sectional would, tickets. How would folks get sectional tickets? What are they going to have to do for that this year? Well, I'll tell you what. Northwood is going to bring a lot of people. Yeah. Um, Walla C is going to going to have a great following, and and I also believe you know Tippy Valley is going to show up. Um, Back and, in the day, we had to go to the AD's office on yep. a particular yeah. day and, and buy a whole setup. Well, yeah. Is that the way it still is. Well, or can I go online? What online? Bill? I, I, here's what I'll tell you: you can show up the the day of the game and probably get a ticket. Right. But 
if you're not willing to risk it, and I wouldn't be because of what I just said, you know, there's going to be a good followings from at least, you know, three of the five schools. And so yeah. you can go to our athletic department, uh, talk to Ann Ritchie in there or Brent Doty, and, and they'll get you hooked up with how many of your tickets, you know, you would like. So um, it, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be – there's going to be a lot of people here watching this sectional. Big game. Big games coming up. We're playing Monday night. Now, that's a reschedule. Mm-hmm. That's a reschedule. It's not on your pocket schedule, Kaz. Don't even look. Unless yeah, you wrote it thank down. you, Bill. Because <laughs> uh, I don't want to go to the wrong place That's right. Again. Not again. Uh, <laughs> uh, we uh, play Monday night at Elkhart Christian. Then we'll play Tippy Valley at home. And then we are sectional bound. So it's going to be it's going to be a big week of basketball. Big week. Are you guys ready, Coach? We're all set, man. We, we really have uh, displayed the qualities that you need to be ready for a sectional. And we, night in and night out, night out, we're playing hard, we're grinding out, um, and we're ready to get there. So we got a couple more games, and then we'll be ready. I know that your uh, uh, help here at the school in preparing the sectional is just tremendous. Talk about some of the folks that are responsible for that. Well, here at Wallace C, we do things first class. And so the, the amount of people that, it's, that it takes to, to make this thing go and to make it first class – um, certainly the volunteers and the, the gate workers and the people that are going to set up the, you know, the, the meals and stuff like that for, for all the workers and the hospitality rooms. And now you, know, you don't the, get to, they don't get to have that thing with the, uh, with the dinner in the game, do they, for the section? Not the, you not can't the upper do deck. That. I, no, you're not allowed. To we do were that. wondering if you could or couldn't, but we decided not to I do don't, that. Don't press it. And so, yeah, that'll be a media. We'll turn those, the oh, upper um, deck. Okay, has free food in the media hospitality there room? There you go, yeah. You told us yeah. ahead of time? Boy, <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. That's, that's, no, that's, uh, that's a rookie mistake Yeah, right boy, there. I, You, you don't let mistake. us know there's going to be free food. Anyway. Uh, no, it's... it's um. Uh, it's going to be a great time. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It'll it'll feel like a, it's the big stage, you know, and it it, it, it is. It is. And in the, the, the end, it stage. is. Yeah. So it's going to be a cool time. the The good thing is it's going to be a great time. But the uh, the reality of of four of the teams playing their last game of the season will be over for four yeah. before the teams also kind of sets in that it's here, you know, and so uh, those are things that if, if most teams in the state of Indiana have to deal with. So. So anyway, there's mixed feelings going in the sectional, certainly. So the wise play would be to get to the high school athletic department ahead of time, get that set of tickets. Um, don't don't leave it up to game night. Make sure you've got those tickets ahead of time. If if you absolutely have to come game night and get them, like Coach said, there probably will be some. Uh, but uh, the smart play is to wait or is to come early yeah. to the uh, AD's <laughs> office and get those tickets. When we come back, we got a couple guys we're going to do a little interview oh, really? here with. Yeah, but I'm, I, Coach is not nervous, but Dad is a little nervous. So we got, <laughs> we got the uh, Miles and Maddox twins, you know, coming in, and it's it's time that they talk to you guys and get on the air, and and so they're they're a little nervous, but uh, um, they've done a great job for oh, us this my. year. We've grinded it out with two freshmen playing. It's it's been amazing to watch them grow and play uh, for me as a coach, and then. When I go home, it's it's dad time, and I'm awfully proud of my sons. That's for sure. And that, and they've got a good coach in your wife. Certainly, I, mean, I hope you ask, I hope you ask him about that. Oh, because, I, that's going to be one of my first questions yes. because uh, Carly and my daughter played on the same team here, and uh, then I went up to watch her several times uh, at the college level. So those two, uh, that's going to and for you guys to have those kids and have twins, yep. that's got to be a, that's a huge huge what huge benefit for your whole life. Yeah, it really is. Uh, truly blessing and we i can tell you without a shadow of doubt and i'm being honest uh we've had fun with it you oh know, yeah at home it's uh, there's been no conflicts at home or here at the school or anything like that and we've had it's really truly been a blessing to see those guys go from eighth grade basketball to, to, to varsity basketball they've done an amazing job and we're awfully proud parents so miles and maddox everingham coming up next here on coach's corner on 93.7 fm the mix and 937themix.com And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. We've talked to the head basketball coach of the Wawasee Warriors, and we've talked with most of the other starters. In fact, I think we've talked to all the starters on the Wawasee basketball program, except for the two young men we're going to talk to this ap- this morning. First, let's talk to uh, Miles Everingham. Uh, joins us here. Appreciate your coming in yeah, and being thanks. with us, Miles. Uh, talk a little bit. Uh, talk a little bit about coming into the basketball program. 
Uh, you uh, were an eighth grader last year playing middle school ball, jumped right into varsity basketball. That had to be kind of a shock to the system. Yeah, it was quite an experience. I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge jump. I mean, I, I really wanted to play varsity basketball as an eighth grader. But I mean, I was trying to like work into it, mm-hmm. kind of just jumped in, you know. Tell, uh, tell me about the experience. How is it that you are able to do that? Tell me uh, how you develop so well to be able to play. Indi- you're in Indiana now. I mean, you're not in Arizona or someplace. The, the, the competition in the, is, is huge in this state. How did you develop so well so fast? I think uh, I developed that fast because of my teammates. I mean, they really just brought me through this. I mean, like Keaton, Caden, all the upperclassmen, they really have a, done a, a good job. Oh, that's that's really uh, that's really interesting. The, the older kids had such an influence, and then of course the question that Bill and I know that I was going to ask now: Your mom and my daughter played high school ball together all through high school, and then when your mom went to college, we went up and watched her play several several games up there. So uh, I know that they both helped you play or helped yeah. you develop. Talk a little bit about how they helped you develop and to where you are now. I mean, yeah, my mom at home, she's always talking about basketball, you know, how I can, like, improve. My dad's obviously, you know, the coach, so, I mean, they really both know basketball. Not at home, dad's the dad, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. He knows how to be a dad at home. And at home, mom's the coach. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) can be, can be. That's all right. Hey, growing up, did you play with them? I mean, did you play, did they teach you, like, I I know I taught my kids how to dribble, how to shoot, you know, and, um, you know, my daughter got four years of varsity ball out of it. Not four years, but, I mean, she played varsity ball out out of being able to do that. And to play that well, you had to have started probably before you were able to walk. Oh yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. I've I've been told that I had a basketball like right when I was born. So uh, yeah. So what is your earliest it. basketball memory? <sighs> what do you, what if you think back and put on the way back machine and the old mind there? What uh, what's your earliest basketball memory? I think my earliest basketball memory is probably like DCBL. It was a oh, what's Youth, that? This was a DeKalb Youth League. Okay. Yeah, I just remember playing with like first second graders like when I was like in kindergarten. Wow. Do you play at home? You have a goal at home then you play with? I mean, like, oh, yeah. We have a barn at home. Yeah. I, you know, back in the day, Bill, that's all we did. You know, every neighborhood had a, had a ball. But, yeah, you had, you, know, a, you had a goal in the driveway. Yeah. He's got a barn. Yeah, we got a barn. Oh, my like gosh. Full court, you know. He's got the full Hoosierism yeah. right there. Oh, the man. The Hoosier experience playing in a barn, only inside it's an actual gym, right? Yeah, it's kind of like concrete floor, but it's yeah. Good. Wow. Tell me what your what your parents did though. How, tell me some of the drills, not drills, but how do they say? Well, here's the basketball. I mean, they have to show you a little bit. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, I when think, did you start doing drills? And, yeah, or, and, yeah, and like shooting and having fun. And uh, I think we just started with like fun, like no really like skills, just having fun with the game. Yeah. yeah. Talk a little bit about that. I mean. Oh, they really didn't really do like a ton of drills. I mean, they try to like get us to, like dribble, shoot. I mean, it was just about having fun with the game. Okay, all right. And so, then, uh, and then, oh, I was, I was going to ask the question yep. I'm not supposed to ask. Okay, Bill. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, of the two coaches, I know your mom <laughs> was probably the better. So uh, talk a little bit how how Who's she influenced better you oh, better God. than your dad did as far as basketball goes. I think they were like pretty much the same. Oh. <laughs> Wise, wise. Oh, you don't man. see that kind of wisdom there, out you, you, get, you get extra pizza yeah. tonight. So, <laughs> you play with your brother, a twin brother, as freshman on a varsity basketball team. That's got to be a little different. That's got to feel a little different. Explain a little bit what it's like playing with your twin brother on a varsity team. Now, I think it feels like just fine. I mean... Well, I'm not saying it's bad or good. I'm saying it's different. Because there's, there's a lot of chemistry there. I mean, we know, we kind of know, like, what we're going to do Uh huh. a lot of the time. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty fun. So, you're able to predict your brother's uh, actions better than others? I mean, not really. I no? Mean, okay. But I've played with him all my life, so, I mean, I know, like, his moves and everything. I see. Okay. Well, very good. Uh, that, well, that definitely helps, too, during a game. I mean, when you've played yeah. with someone all that long, you know exactly how to, you know, how to shoot and how to play and, and all that. So, yeah, I mean, you've had a lifelong partner here your whole life. Yeah, it's, it's been lifelong. It's been really fun. 
Oh. Yeah, they've been twins their whole lives. Yeah, <laughs> and, and playing together your whole life. I mean, I had to walk at least two or three blocks to find someone to play in my neighborhood. Now all you had to do is go to the barn. Uh, what about the enthusiasm to do that when you were little? I mean, did you did you like just uh, let's pick up the ball and let's go out and play? I mean, you had to have done that a lot. I know my kids did that. They said, "Oh, come on, Dad, you know, let's go shoot." And talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we did that a lot. I mean, I have another brother that's a year younger than me, so it was like me, Maddox, and him. We've always go out in the barn and just play. And and what do you play? You play one on one, horse, pig. What do you? Do? We do all sorts of stuff. I mean, we do twenty one, one on one, forty two. We do all that. Uh, that was the, that was a big thing with my kids too. Playing my daughter and my son played against each other the whole time, so that was a lot of fun to watch them do that. And I know your your dad when we interview him and we talk about you guys. I mean, this is a time of his life. He's got four years of just you know just pure what Bill, pure just just a lot of fun of being yeah. able to to have those your kids and the way you get along and the way you get along on the team and the way you get along with your your, your teammates. Oh my gosh, yeah. talk a little bit about your teammates. Yeah, they've been really helpful in, like, the journey from 8th grade basketball to freshman. I mean, they've taught me a lot. Like, all the seniors, Keaton and Caden, I mean, they really helped me through this. Talk a little bit about um, uh, your basketball regimen. There are a lot of young young people, younger than you, way younger yeah. than you, all right? Uh, what, the junior Warriors now start, I want to say, third grade? I mean, way, way younger, Okay that look up to you as a as a role model. What would you tell those young people about what they should be doing to prepare to follow in your footsteps? Because there's not a young person out there who doesn't want to walk into the high school as a varsity basketball yeah. player. They all do. What do they need to do to prepare to do that? I mean they just need to have they need to have fun with the game. I mean you have to have fun with the game to be ordered to be like good. Mm-hmm. I mean, skill, yeah, that'll come. You just need to work at it. What's your, what's your favorite thing to do? Uh, what, what, where do you think you're the best at? Three points, driving and shooting, free throws. What, what, uh, what has developed you? What is your best skill passing? You know, uh, what do you like to do the best? What do you think you're the best at? I mean, if you were to go to school as a freshman to some college and they're scouting you, where do you think you would really, what, do well at? I think I, I just work on everything. I mean, there's really not one thing I need to do, right? I just got to do it all. Yeah, tell me about the three-point shot. I know that was not the case in my era. When tell Kaz, me, oh when Kaz God. played, a bucket was only worth a point and a half. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, that, that the three is a real uh, real advantage. Oh, real, uh, game changer. Talk about, about that and about how you, your whole team, not your whole team, but you've got several kids that are really good, of course, you and your brother, uh, on shooting the three. Yeah, I mean, we can all shoot the three. I mean, I mean, it's the three point. Yeah, just me and Maddox, we shoot that. And in your own mindset, when do you think about how do you know? I would have no idea when to shoot it and when to pass it. How do you come about that? I know that's got to be a hard decision and a hard thing for you to discuss. I have no idea how you would know to, to do that. I mean, I don't need that much room to shoot that, but I mean, you just got to, like, it's just a feeling, you know, just to shoot it or pass it. Let me ask this question because I think this, I think people who of, of, of your age, you came about, you've never known basketball without the three point arc. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you think about the arc when you shoot or do you just shoot and if the arc is there, fine? I mean, yeah, you just think about like, you make to be sure behind you're it. behind the arc? Yeah. Yeah, I just make sure you you're do. behind it. Because I saw last night a couple of times at, yeah, at East Noble, Keaton Dukes. Yeah. Step back to make sure he was behind the arc before the ball went up. But I didn't know if you did because you shot sort of a, a just a flow and you just count on being out there somewhere. But you pay deep you pay close attention to whether you're behind it or not. You just gotta know where you're at on the floor. I mean, that's it that's it. Talk a little bit about school. Yeah, All right. So uh what is it you uh like to do here at school? What subjects do you think you're really good at? At school, I mean, strength training, I just got to be in the gym every day, you know, lift, get bigger. You know, I kind of got to do that. And uh, I'd say science has been pretty fun. What Very science good. classes? What? Which ones? Right which? now I got biology. As a freshman, you've taken biology? Yeah. Okay. So, that yeah, that's good. What, what about your uh, math classes? What are you taking there? 
I actually got uh, Mr. Zino for math right now. Oh, that's uh, that <laughs> boy. That is a great thing because I taught uh, him how to. Uh, you know, all, no, actually, it's my wife, uh, his mom, <laughs> that taught him everything about math. Yeah. So, uh, tell me about a little, little about some of your other classes that you really like. You, with strength training, science. Yeah, strength training, science. Yeah, I mean, I've enjoyed those a lot. What uh, What are your future plans? And, and you know, at your age, you may not have even thought about this yet. But do you have do you have a, a, a vision of where you want to go from Wabasi? Uh I haven't really thought about this, but I mean, I've thought about playing basketball in the future. But I mean, I haven't really thought beyond that. All right. Okay. Yeah. It, so where do you see your leadership of this team going? Obviously, as a freshman, you're on the you're on the front end here. You're on the the, the cusp of your varsity career. Where do you see the Wabasi team? going how do you see it progressing yeah i think we're gonna be i think we're gonna be good but right now i'm just focused on you know winning that sectional okay one day at a time yep one day at a time sort of an oakland raiders attitude that's all right do you uh, preview any of the games with your dad i know he spends countless hours going over film and all i know you don't do all that because you got your own studies to do but do you discuss any of that about what you're going to do in the in the games you know the, ahead i mean yeah not not really though not any more I, than home, another player yeah I, I mean at home we don't really talk that much about like scouting all that mm -hmm. i mean we watch films sometimes you know on huddle you can watch film yeah. by yourself too as a, do you watch the as the team do you yeah do, sometimes we watch films and team. then discuss what happens and yeah. all that stuff that's kind of a neat thing to do back in the day that was not even that was back before <laughs> film was film film it was just, film. It was just pictures chiseled into a piece of stone <laughs> yeah when they, when they first oh get started. my that is so good so anyhow um it's great that uh you've got all this family around i know uh, your mom's family really attends a lot of the games and and you come from a great basketball wabasi tradition which makes you somewhat wabasi royalty uh talk a little <laughs> bit about uh all the beers that come to the come to the game and being part of that group yeah that's that's been really like a privilege to have all of my family at the games mm -hmm. yeah even my family in arizona they try to watch you know it's pretty fun well they have the advantage of the the lucid and 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 interesting commentary that kaz brings to the ball yeah. <laughs> so. i don't know about that but it, it is kind of neat that they're able to you know stay and why i mean gee many christmas the technology nowadays is just amazing yeah, here's so. one how much does your grandfather beer try to coach no, he's, he's he's been pretty good with that. I mean, he just wants to have wants us to have fun, because he coaches everybody. Kaz and I would show up at the game. He tried to coach us on how we do basketball. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he, he coached, but and not he's you good. guys, huh? Oh yeah, he always had something. He's well, excellent. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but but with you, he's just your grandfather. Yeah. Yeah, wow. he's, just grandpa. he's just grandpa. Wow, that's, that, that's, that, 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 that's we're going to have him on now and, and, yeah, and find, find out. out how he deals with that much self-control. <laughs> yeah. All right, Amen. well, very good. Yeah. Okay, Miles, thank you very much for being with us. Yeah, Appreciate it. We're going to talk to Maddox here in just a moment. This is Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM, The Mix, and 937themix.com. Usually we're talking to the head basketball coach of the Wallace Warriors. Today we're talking to the Everingham brothers. Uh, we had Miles on, on earlier, and now Maddox has come to join us. Maddox, thanks for being with us this morning. Yeah, thank you. Talk a little bit about what you see as uh, your role with the Wallace Warrior basketball program. Where do you see that you fit into this varsity group? You know, um, we've, we've got um, great leaders on this team, so Keaton, Caden, they're just you know really good leaders our teammates are just really hard working i just go and practice and work hard but what do you see as your role what do you do what uh, what what do you see as your responsibilities when you're on the floor where do, what where does your cog fit into this machine you know i just do whatever to help the team you know um just work hard whenever i go out on the floor go to practice just work hard work hard you know and you've got three years ahead of you yep you know you're yep. gonna have to take this freshman experience and add it and then you're gonna have other kids coming underneath you got to work with the kids you've already you know the the juniors and sophomores i mean this is going to be a really interesting thing for you guys to yep. do talk a little bit about that you know I, I i'm very excited for the people that are coming up and the next years to come but that's 
Yeah, it's yeah. it's just going to be it's going to be interesting to see mm-hmm. how you take the leadership that you've learned from now, especially uh, Dukes and Weldy, and how you are going to be thrust into those roles for the next three years. Yeah, it seems to me, and and this is just from an observer who's seen your games, but I don't go to practice and and such as that. But it seems to me like your brother plays more guard like. He's more up top more, and you tend to roll down more and play a little more baseline, a little more to the block. Would you say that's true? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. We, we both play. We can both play basically anywhere. I'm not saying what you can do. I'm saying what you're called to do yeah. in this in, in what we're doing now. Yeah. Would you say that's true? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Say, yeah. So uh, how do you think that's that affects your role on the team how does that make you different what what effect does that have the fact that you're playing guard out on the out on the wing and then sometimes you have to roll down is it two different roles for you to learn or is it really just one role with two different pieces yeah it's basically just one one role with two different pieces you know i do whatever i'm asked talk a little bit about playing we talked to your brother about this but talk a little bit about playing with your brother how does that work out for you personally you know, um, we've got chemistry at home, and I, it just rolls right onto the court. Like, if we make eye contact, I can tell what he's going to do. <laughs> that's, yeah. cool. that's so neat. That is really neat. And then uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the – we talked to your brother also about some of your earliest basketball memories about growing up playing ball. Yeah, one of my earliest basketball memories, we were in a garage. We had, like, this mini hoop. Uh-huh. You know, um, our dad was, you know, just teaching us about the game. And I was playing with Miles, and I couldn't go to my left. So I tried going to my left, and I scored against <laughs> Miles, and that's just, it was just fun. And it was at that moment that the heavens opened, and the two yes. golden yeah. shafts of light came down, and Coach Everingham <laughs> said, ah, oh, we have reached we have reached the journey. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, and then one of the questions I ask your uh, brother, uh, talk a little bit about how your mom is the better coach, wow. and, oh, yeah. and you know, no, talk be, a little bit about be that. Aware. He's, he's yeah, <laughs> your, your brother here. gave a very good answer for that. But tell, you know, I, I like I said before, I've watched her since she was in grade school, and uh, watched her a lot in college or some in college. But talk a little bit about that. They're both of them excellent ball yeah. players. You know, both know the game of basketball pretty well. So if I got any questions, I can go to them, and they just you know teach me about the game and how to have fun and play. Oh, well that's, played, well the, played. Oh, yes, I like yes, that. How to answer, have fun and play. What an answer. You guys need an extra pieces of pizza for those good answers, both of you. Yes. How oh. many, um, during, this, during the season, obviously, you're in the coaching regimen provided by the team. You're, you're doing what the team says to do. But all, outside the season, how much basketball do you play? How do you prepare when you're not in season? Yeah. What do you do? You know, we have a barn actually at home that has a hoop. So I can go out there. We have a um, basketball shooting gun. So we can go out what there. What is that? Well, yeah. You know, what it, is that? It passes you. Like, you shoot. There's a net. Okay. And it just passes you back the ball so you can just oh. you don't have to go get your rebound. Oh, like right. those carnival things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the off season, you know, I just prepare in there. Just go, go to the high school gym sometimes and, you know. Just prepare. Do so you that guys sounds shoot? like you do a lot of spot shooting with that. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you guys shoot around together a lot? Like one guy shoots, one guy rebounds, and then switch off? Yeah, we can do that, yeah. Do you do that a lot or not? Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we do that quite a bit. You know, I have a younger brother named Davis. We play with him, too, and, you know, just have fun. That's, that's really kind of neat. Do you practice any special thing? Like, uh, you know, the three-point still amazes me. Do you practice that three-point a lot? Or When yeah. did you start doing that? You know, um... I I don't really know. It just kind of came to me. And you, and your brother and your other your younger brother also do the threes now. Yeah, my younger brother he's in eighth grade right now. Wow. So and who is the better three point shooter? Do you really? Uh, uh, I don't know. Do you kind of both just <laughs> go ahead and shoot at that? We're all, we're all pretty good at shooting. Threes. You are you are yeah. pretty good at shooting threes. He's pretty good at deflecting the answer. Too. Yeah, well, well, that's I good. Don't know. We're all, all right. Is there much that. competition between you guys? <laughs> oh yeah, we compete all the time. Oh, that's good to yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, I figured you would. Mm-hmm. So anyhow. Um, do you, uh, do you do a lot of work with the younger kids, the, the junior warriors and such as that? Yeah, there's, um, club one every, like every weekend I go there once, like once every week or something like that. I got to believe at the club one program and such as that, that, that you draw a lot of attention from those younger boys and girls. What would you say to them about basketball? They want to be you. 
Uh, let's just not let's not pull any punches here. They want to be you. They want to yeah, walk into Wabasee High School and they walk onto the floor and they're playing varsity ball. Yeah. What would you tell them? You know, just work hard. Um, just have fun with the game. Just have fun and just you know play a game. Well, that's a great answer. Just have fun and work hard. Work hard is the is the key yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk a little bit about your classes. Mm-hmm. I know we talked about that before and. We got about five minutes left. Uh, your yeah. class at school, what you like? What you like from before, you know, in, in middle school even, and and go back as far as you want, and some of the things you really remember at school. Yeah, um, in middle school, I kind of enjoyed math. So in high school, it kind of correlated to. Uh, I have Mr. Peschel now. He's a great teacher. Geometry, um, right? Yep, geometry. So yeah. that helps you in, in uh, basketball because you got to know all the angles. Yep, and the <laughs> arc. And then the, the tie, look at Bill closing his eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But uh, what up, what up, some of the other classes you got? You know, um, I have this class called, called Strength Training. You lift weights and just get stronger. It helps me on the court. That's kind of a neat thing to do have. You wait, do you lift weights outside of class? Um, I haven't started that yet, but okay. I plan on doing that. What about this summer? What are you planning on doing for to get yourself ready for next season? Um, yeah, I'm going to play, play a little bit of basketball in, this summer and just, you know, go in the gym, get some shots up practice ball handling shooting just do you do a summer league uh yeah i kind of like play with a team okay are, are you gonna do any other sports oh yeah um i'm planning on doing baseball this year oh really? wow how yeah. neat is that yeah because that was uh, that was one i really talk about your positions in baseball um i don't really know what to expect in baseball yet but i i played catcher this summer oh my so, gosh yeah whoa so well, you know, the, really know Coach respect. Beasley was one of the great catchers here at Wabasee, yes. yeah, and uh, probably had uh, some uh, role in that, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, talk talk a little about what position are you going to play, catcher? Maybe what else do you know? Um, catcher, I don't really know what to expect going into baseball season because I, you know, haven't played high school baseball yet. So, what about did you play? In the, did they have a middle school? What do you What do you do in the, um, in the? There's this like league for middle schoolers, so I played that. You know, had had a lot of fun playing baseball then. Um, talk a little bit, if you would, um, about the, the, the trip from eighth grade basketball that you played last year to varsity ball that you played this year. First of all, just the stamina required is this as how, what, how much of a difference and in what way is it different from a physical stamina perspective to go from eighth grade ball to varsity ball? Um, yeah, you know, um, it was very tough. It, it took a lot of hard work, and my teammates, my the leaders, Keaton and Caden, you know, really helped me get there. The It's really different from eighth grade basketball. Um, it's just a lot more. It's a lot of hard work, and it's physical out there. Banging well, bodies has got to be yeah. tough. Last night they had that 6'9 kid from mm-hmm. East Noble. I'm not sure whether he was 6'9 wide or 6'9 tall, but he was massive, and – at least once you came around the corner and bounced off of him like he <laughs> yeah, was a trampoline. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be tough as a freshman. You're, you, yeah. Do you feel like you're going to physically grow into that kind of a role? Yeah, um, I I feel like I'm going to get stronger as time goes on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Have you guys thought anything about uh, your future after Wallace C? Um, no, I haven't really thought about that yet. Um, I don't really know what it brings. If it brings basketball. I don't know if it might. And, it you might. know, playing two sports, it could bring baseball. Yeah, it could. You know, yeah. and you could go local or you could go, mm-hmm. you know, some school anywhere. Kaz anywhere. is working for local because he wants to oh. follow you wherever you go. <laughs> I love, yeah, he I still, told that. He still tells uh, Shauna Zolman yeah. that she needs to go back to college to right. Notre Dame. Go to Notre Dame so I can go watch her. Now. Oh. And yeah. other other kids, you know, like I went, like I told you before, I went and watched your mom play yeah. several times. Yeah, mm-hmm. She and my daughter went up there, and, uh, and that was really fun. To just kind of go in the gym and not, you know, just watch them play because yeah. you know how well they end you guys. Oh, my. Do you think you ever go to the same school and play? Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I know that's yeah. way down the road. Yeah, I haven't really thought about it. Well, they'd yeah, have to yeah. be interested. The school would have to be interested. Yeah. And all yeah. that. It, I mean, there's a lot of variables. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, What's it like here at school? Uh, how, is, uh, how have your classmates uh, accepted you? Not just, you know, you got a twin brother on the on the on not just on the team but in the school and then you walk right in as a varsity player how's your adaptation to the school coming because you've only been here a while and not yeah. that long you know um the high school has been great um really been liking it my classes have been just awesome my classmates you know i love my classmates you know it's just, just awesome here 
You know, this is this is just a great school and a great community. Yeah. And uh, you guys really feel into it. Talk about, a little bit about how you influence the kids lower than you are. The, you know, the kids coming up. I notice, uh, you know, uh, both uh, the, the seniors, oh my gosh, their influence on the lower yeah. kids. Oh, yeah. Talk a little bit about it. I see kids come up to you guys sometimes after the game and, mm-hmm. and just talk to you. They want to just be, you know, be friends with you guys. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. Um, no, it's kind of awesome having little kids look up to you. It's like dream come true, basically. Wow, that's kind of neat. Um, you're part of the uh, the beer legacy, whether you like it or not. Yep. There have been beers doing high school athletics here at Wabas Sea since before there was a Wabas Sea. You can go back through all those trophies out there, and you've got all kinds of relatives uh, on all those trophies coming through. Yep. Do you do you interact in a basketball way with any of the other beers? Because Milford, I think, is about fifty percent populated <laughs> by the beers. Um, do you do you have a lot of get-togethers with them? Do you do basketball with them? Is there a group of them that 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 are related to you that you work with? Anything like that? Well, um, you know, I don't really have cousins that are my age, but oh, um, well, that happens in families yeah, sometimes. Yeah. So um, my grandpa Beer, he he knows basketball. Oh yeah, I think yeah. I would yeah. think he knows best. Yeah. Does he? Does he? We ask your brothers, but does he try to coach you at all, or give you pointers? Or? I mean, he he gives us pointers and stuff like, but he's just grandpa. You know. That's kind of neat. That, that is. is so yeah. neat. What yeah. about your grandma? What about uh, my grandma? Yeah, yeah, his mom. I uh, mean, his she's, wife. <laughs> she's not really a basketball person, though, is she? Yeah, she she knows a little bit. Yeah. Does she? Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Well, all she right. raised uh, she raised well, your mom. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and she she was at all she's at all your games. Yeah, she's at everyone. Uh, at I see your games, so that's kind of fun for her. So, uh at what uh what is your favorite meal when you go over to their house to eat? What is, what is your what does your grandma cook for you that you like really well? I don't know. The Thanksgiving meal is always pretty good over Oh, there. really? Yeah. And and she has what, the turkey and all the yeah, gravy all, and everything. All, all the normal stuff. And yeah. of course you help out with the dishes and everything afterwards, right? Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, I figure and you and your brother, right? Now yeah. who is the better dishwasher? You or your brother? <laughs> Gotta we'll be get... Miles. Gotta be Miles. <laughs> uh Maddox, you're coming into sectional play. You've never done that before. You're coming into the big high school tournament. Um Yeah. What's your view toward that? You know, I'm just excited to go in there and just work work hard, you know. Just play my hardest. Um, looking forward to uh, for Key and Caden just leading me into there. Maddox, I want to thank you for coming in and being with us. Maddox Everingham of the Wabasee Warriors, uh, one of the starters here on the team. I want to remind you that, uh, yeah, you could wait to the last minute. You could try and get those tickets to get in. I sure wouldn't do that. I think that's the, that's the um, uh, least likely uh, scenario for you to get in for the sectional ticket for the sectional games. The smart play is to go to the uh, high school athletic office uh, beforehand and get those tickets. You can buy them from the athletic office, and then you know you've got a seat waiting for you inside that gymnasium. Make sure you stop by the AD's office and get your sectional tickets. This has been Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. WRWTLP, Syracuse.